All right, I want to welcome back the panel and get right back into our conversation this morning. Got a great panel this morning. Emerald Robinson, Mark Halpern, Stacey Washington, and Rick Gates all back with us. Uh, I want to talk about Andrew Cuomo. And before we get into the, the headline, it's, uh, it's worth noting today is, is March 25th. It was one year ago today that he signed that executive order that doomed the uh, lives of, of 15,000 um, elderly nursing home patients that were COVID positive. He had other options available to him. If you're not familiar with, with what was going on in New York at the time, Donald Trump ordered that the comfort ship uh, make port in lower Manhattan, which it did, uh, and the Javits Center, uh, which is a massive facility. It's actually where Hillary Clinton was going to host her victory party in 2016 uh, and shatter that glass ceiling. Didn't happen, but that was also available. Governor Cuomo said no to that and instead ordered COVID positive nursing home patients back into their nursing homes. And, and he continues to lie about it. It's worth noting that was one year ago today. Uh, Mark Halpern, we'll get some reaction from you and then we'll, we'll dive into the, the latest Cuomo headline. Well, look, he, he's under siege from a lot of stories, including the new one we're going to talk about. Uh, but in the end, as serious as all the allegations are, uh, the people of New York need adjudication of each of them separately, not just kind of put them in a big stew and say lots of Cuomo, Cuomo controversy. But the nursing home one, I think, is going to go down in history, not just for Governor Cuomo, but for those in the media and the Democratic Party and elsewhere who celebrated him throughout 2020 when all of this was quite apparent to, to many in real time. Yeah. Emerald, I know you always bring up Janice Dean. I, I thought of her this morning. Um, yeah. I just, you know, she lost both her in-laws as a direct result of this decision. You think about these families and what they must think of their governor and, and the fact that he's still not owning it and, and still hasn't come out with a firm apology. It's, uh, I'm just, I'm still stunned. I remain stunned that this is not what's going to bring down Andrew Cuomo. I'm not stunned. Because look, if this was really an issue that was taken seriously by this administration or our media, Rachel Levine would not have been confirmed to the Health and Human Services Department. She's implicated in something similar in Pennsylvania when she was a, a, a health official there under Governor Tom Wolf, and yet she will now be second at HHS as the pandemic is ongoing. So yes. I'm just not that surprised largely because uh, she is transgender, but transgender yeah. with, a, with, with a very tattered past, um, you know, which is an issue that is underreported, I would say. Uh, but let's yeah. talk about the latest Cuomo headline. Uh, Rick Gates, we'll start with you. Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, is being accused of offering preferential treatment, offering his brother testing, his mother who's elderly, his sister, staffers, and other lawmakers that he was friendly with. You see the headline there. This is from the Times Union. Um, that's March 24th, 2021. But he was offering this testing a year ago in March. We remember when Chris Cuomo was allegedly sequestered to his basement, but then he was looking at property on Long Island. Uh, a total lie, a total fabrication for ratings, which worked at the time. Times were good for the Cuomo brothers back then. But uh, this is, I mean, that things just keep getting worse for Andrew Cuomo here. Yeah, this is indicative of his leadership and what we've seen, not just over the last year, but, you know, for, for a long time. And now it's finally catching up with him. So now we can add nepotism to uh, the list of mm -hmm. issues that Andrew Cuomo is going to have to deal with. And I just think, unfortunately, for, you know, the citizens of New York, they could do so much better, have so much better leadership and have somebody that really is focused on the citizens of the state. And when you see this, it's just disheartening as, a, as an American citizen. You know, if you're in New York, you just you want your leaders to, you know, help and, and, and provide provide you and the services what you need. And unfortunately, Andrew Cuomo has thought about himself, thought about clearly now his family. Uh, and, and look, everybody, I think, in some situation would say, I'm going to try to help my family. But Absolutely. he's an elected leader. He right. has a duty and obligation to help everybody in his state without any uh, sort of preferential treatment or privilege. And this is just going to add to the fuel. And I think what's interesting is you're seeing now the, the, the Democrats really gang up on him. And I think as this continues, it's not going to be a matter of if he you know ultimately resigns. I think it'll be just a matter of when. So let me just, Stacey, I just want to read you the uh, response from CNN. I think we've got a, uh, a, a screen grab of it for you. But uh, CNN responded to this and they said, quote, it is not surprising that in the earliest days of a once in a century global pandemic, when Chris was showing symptoms and was concerned about possible spread, he turned to anyone he could for advice and assistance as any human being would. And I re read that, and it, basically that is a very polite way of saying, don't you know who I am? So, you know, Rob, this is just more evidence of how far CNN has fallen 
Uh, I just, I always hearken back to my childhood when I would get up in the morning and read the Stars and Stripes, and then I'd cut the TV on, and we had Armed Forces Network, but we also had CNN, and they would be breaking news from the Middle East. They would have their correspondents in war zones reporting on what was happening around the world. And when you said you saw something on CNN, it was Bible, it was gospel, it was the truth, it was right. hardcore reporting, totally. and they were award-winning journalists. And now you have Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo putting on what is essentially uh, it's some kind of like bro show where they sit around and compliment each other and spew lies and they insult regular Americans. They slander elected officials. And so to find out that Cuomo is not only immature and a bully when he's off time, was not wearing a mask when he was infected with coronavirus, but also had special treatment because his brother is the governor, not only shows what you said, but it points to the inequities of Democratic leadership. And you see those all over the country. Right. And the Cuomo case is just the prima facie example, but there are so many others. So, I, you know, it's not it's not anything new here. It's just... I, I it's, agree, it's Stacey. And I have a tough time with the misinformation they spew. Uh, if you watch their coverage of the situation at the border, it's honky-dory down there uh, in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California. Uh, I, I wanted to uh, talk about the situation with Bill Clinton uh, and Kamala Harris. I, I just... I, I don't understand why they would do this. Um, Kamala Harris, our vice president, by the way, who could be president at some point, uh, is having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with former President Bill Clinton on the impact of COVID-19 on women and empowering women and girls in the U.S. and around the world. Now, my question, Mark Capron, we'll start with you, is, you know, why would you not have Michelle Obama or Hillary Clinton or Chelsea Clinton paired with Kamala Harris? Why would you go with somebody like Bill Clinton, who seven women have credibly accused of sexual harassment? Because he always plays by different rules. He did in Arkansas, he did in Washington, and he does now. Emerald, was Harvey Weinstein not available? Well, uh, it's so funny you say that because, you know, this, the satirical site, the Babylon Bee, did, a, did a, a satire piece yesterday saying that Kamala Harris was doing the same with Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> so it's funny you should say that. But the headline with Bill Clinton, you would almost think that was satire, right? I, I thought it was The Onion. So I saw it on my phone, thought it was The Onion. I was like, oh, that's fake. Yeah. No. Rick. It's real. Rick, you've spent a lot of time in the White House. Kamala Harris, how many people are, are buzzing around her all day? She's got a million staffers. I mean, how tone deaf are these people? Why wouldn't somebody be like, uh, Madam Vice President, just a, a quick, just quickly, quickly, uh, before Donald Trump's two impeachments uh, that he beat, uh, Bill Clinton was impeached, uh, largely because of, of a situation with somebody named Monica Lewinsky, who, by the way, I would rather see her. Don't forget the title of this is Empowering Women and Girls. Monica Lewinsky's had a reputation thrown around in the gutter for the last 20 plus years, and she has still overcome all of that to become a really strong, powerful woman today. Why not have somebody like that? Yeah, absolutely. This is uh, clearly somebody who's asleep at the wheel, you know, in terms of uh, Kamala Harris' staff and, and being uh, engaged in this. And look, I was going thinking through when I saw this headline uh, back, you know, to the second debate uh, in 2016 um, when, you know, Donald Trump was up against the wall against a number of issues. And Bill Clinton, you know, attended that uh, event. And of course, the the topic was, uh, you know, women and, and the way that the, they were treated. And, and, and mm. the focus was more on Bill Clinton than it was the debate because, you know, he's tried to navigate this issue and he hasn't done a very good job of it. And this situation with Kamala Harris only brings back bad memories of, of what that is and what Bill Clinton did to these women or allegedly did to these women. And so I think it sets a bad precedent. And you, yes, you could have identified more than a, you know a, a thousand people that would have been better suited for that interview. So I think it's a missed opportunity and it's certainly not gonna you know bode well for Kamala Harris either. Yeah, and it's just, it's fodder. Let's, it's let's fodder for cable news. His, let's not forget his association with Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, yeah, I mean, Bill Clinton's been to that island. Express a couple, a couple dozen times. Was he empowering those young girls? Right. This kind of we, we still don't know what happened on that magical island in the U.S. Virgin no, Islands that, down there. No, uh, and Jeffrey Epstein's dead, so he can't tell the tale. But I honestly, I thought about, you know, it'd be like they're looking for a host on The Bachelor. It'd be like Bill Cosby hosting The Bachelor now. You know, it's just like that. That's how that's how foolish this is. Uh, yeah, panel. Say, was Bill Cosby not available? <laughs> yeah, Bill Cosby, he's he's, uh, he's unavailable right now, as is Harvey Weinstein. Uh, panel, we got to leave it there. We'll pick this back up at the top of the hour. Looking forward to that.